What it is, focus your homeboy fur back again with another episode of the realest, most entertaining sports show in the game. Put it on some. I got a good one for y'all today. I'm telling y'all already see what's down there right there. Y'all see what's down there in the headline. I told y'all I'm not playing. You understand me? But before we get into it, I got to tell you this. This is sponsored by Statement Tees. That Statement Tees, every T-shirt you wear makes a statement. You understand? And the T-shirt I'm rocking right now, y'all see it is popping up on your screen right now. You undid. You know what I'm saying? I'm always rip where I'm from. You understand what I'm saying? Just like the person that I got on here for you today. You understand? I have a woman who hails from H-Town, Houston, Texas, where she played a high school ball at Yates High School. I have a woman who was rated the second best forward, or excuse me, wing player, because she versatile. Yeah, I don't just want to call her no forward. You understand? Y'all going to see when I talk to her. And if y'all seen her play, y'all see what I'm talking about. Talking about, you understand? So I'm going to say the second best wing player out of Texas. And that's a big state now, y'all. You know what I'm talking about? That's a huge state. I have a woman who was named the Southland Conference Freshman of the Year at Lamar University. I have a woman who, when she moved on to Houston, she led them in points per game. She led them in total steals. She led them in total blocks. Again, I told y'all about the versatility. You know what I'm talking about? She was also all AAC third team. You feel me? I have a woman who started this past year for the undefeated in the SWAC, regular season champs and tournament champs. I'm talking about the Jackson State Tigers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you feel me? She dropped 22 in the conference title game with five steals to go with it. You know what I'm talking about? She going to take some. She going to take some. I'm talking about I got a woman who had Kim Markey over there. Damn near about to lose her mind. Don't let that pr- that post game her talking about say my name, say my name, and all that other stuff she talking about. No. During that game, the woman was in her feelings because this woman that I got on this show right now was putting in that work. You understand me, all right? I have a woman who's also an October baby, just like your boy. You know what I'm saying? This is my favorite player, y'all. It was meant to be. You know what I'm talking about? I'm, an, I'm born on October 4th. See, you were born on October 3rd. This, do you all see what's going on? God just, just likes something about that time of the year. You understand? I have the one and only. Ace Town legend. The Euro queen. The dime dropper. Showstopper. Miss. Maya, Crump. Maya, what the business is? What's up, man? What's up? I ain't glad to have you on. Glad to have you on. Like I told you, you're my favorite player from this year. You know what I'm saying? You just That energy that you be playing with just had me turned up, up in here about to say stuff in front of my kids that I don't say <laughs> in front of my kids, up in her throwing signs that I ain't thrown since I was a little boy. You just, you just play. With, with energy and heart and skill that I love to see. You feel me? And so I'm glad to have you on a really, really spotlight uh, uh, what you d- did personally, but also what the ladies in general did this past year. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I ain't going to waste time. We're going to go ahead and get into it. Now, when you transferred from Houston, I know a lot of teams had to be getting at you. You feel me? Uh, uh, including those HBCUs that are in Texas. So what led you to Jackson State? Like, what was it about Jackson State that uh, made you come on over? Uh, Jackson State was in my last three options of schools. I didn't want to go nowhere in Texas again because I felt like it would be better for me to leave home mm-hmm. instead of just keep going to school, and you know, in the same state, same, same city. So I had – a choice in between Jackson State and Rutgers. Mm, okay. Yeah, had the choice between Jackson State and Rutgers. So I sat there, I prayed on it. I prayed on it a lot, actually, because, you know, it's a power five. You got power five, then you got the HBCU mm. on the other hand. So, and God just led me one day to just call Coach Cuz and be like, hey, I'm going to come to Jackson State. So, yeah. So a lot, a lot of thousand prayers went into it. Yeah. 
Y'all hear that young youngest? Y'all out here making these decisions. You got to really put some thought and prayer up into it. You know what I'm talking about? Some of these youngest out here be moving, moving off emotion, moving off the vibe. Yeah. But you really got to put that anybody thought else, into it. Anybody else probably would have went to Rutgers right off the bat. That's true. Know, so. That's true. That's true. For me experiencing a PWI, I had to, you know, maybe make a switch. That y'all, y'all hear it out there. Cause I keep telling them, we y'all keep bringing what y'all did in that tournament. I think it's gonna change some folks' mind and make them make that same decision mm -hmm. uh, that you made. Now you were uh, Houston's leading scorer, as I said in the lead in. Uh, so coming to Jackson State and and, and taking fewer shots because uh, uh, anybody that watched the game know we were dedicated to trying to get Misha her touches and y'all mm -hmm. were so uh, talented across the board that you know. Pretty much everybody out there could go get a bucket, you know what I'm talking about. So, mm -hmm. uh, how was it for you being able to uh, fit into that scheme like that? So, even though I'm not the leading scorer here, I still do, you know, different things. Like my role hasn't changed from from when I was at Houston to where I am now. See, at Houston, I was more so I had to score. You get what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say? So, I absolutely had to score here. I don't have to do much. And, you know, it was it was a little adjustment for me at first coming in because, you know, you got Misha, basically Misha team, Misha and Roga team, if we're going to be honest. Right. So, you know, I had to, you know, adjust to that. But I, I enjoyed playing with Misha, though. That was, that was a great experience to play with another, with a big, with a, with a good big man, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't that big of an adjustment. I still had the same role. If anything, Coach Reed used to get mad when I didn't take that many shots. Really? So, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Coach Reed. <laughs> Coach Reed used to get on my head in practice. <laughs> I'll probably pass up a shot. She'll stop the whole practice. Yeah, let me out. <laughs> <Dang, I'm like, laughs> she open too, Coach. You know. She wanted you to be aggressive, though. She probably knew she was going to need that up out of you at some point. Yeah. And, you know, it showed up. Oh. Uh, did y'all go into the swag season like, you know what, we finna run a table? Like, cause I don't know, people they be looking at it like what y'all did were regular. You know what I'm talking about? Like to be able to, to really run the table like that in the regular season and then in the tournament, that was incredible. You understand? So was that something, I know y'all had a goal to win the swag, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. But did y'all go into it after playing so well against those power fives at the beginning of the year? That were y'all like, you know what, when we get in the swag, it's a wrap? We actually wanted to, uh, we actually made the goal to be undefeated in the swag before we started playing those power fives. So, uh -huh. so we already knew our potential. And then once we did start playing those power fives, it was like, mm -hmm. it was like, oh yeah, like it's no excuse for us not to go undefeated. And that's no, that's no uh, shots to the other teams. It, right, it was right, hard. right, right. It was very hard. It was harder than people think. Right. You know, because you got other factors that go into, you know, the team and stuff, not just the games. So, yeah. But we did make that go before the season even started. That's what's up. That speaks to y'all confidence. That's big, then. That's big. Uh, you turned up big for us, as I said, in the SWAC tournament uh, title game, but also in that game versus lsu i was sitting there watching that game with my wife she was getting frustrated she was mad at mocking all the calls that they were getting and i was like baby it's a lot more time and it's like soon as i said that coach Reed got that tick you start going crazy you feel me like what gave you the confidence to come into that game on that big stage like that and do what you did well you know me playing at u of h i was i'm used to playing under hostile environments you know mm -hmm. we was playing power fives and stuff like that but you know this is my first time in march madness and stuff like that once again it this just goes back to me praying i prayed before the game about four five times man i'm not gonna lie <laughs> just because you know this is the biggest stage i've ever played in in my career so right. i prayed to just stay Poise, no nervousness, just, you know. And when Coach Reed got that tick, it fueled everybody. It turned everybody up because Coach Reed don't get ticks now. Right. She don't get if she get a tick, it ain't for no reason. Uh huh. You know, so she put that fire in us, and we just start coming, coming back. 
I told my wife, I said, babe, that's probably strategic right there. Like out the coaching handbook. Like when your team need a little push or something, get you a little tech. And then you see y'all, y'all came to bat for y'all supported her after that. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, as I told the people, you got a swagger to your game that just the B100 is something that I want to see more of in the women's game for real, for real. You know what I'm talking about? Like somebody like you out there, uh, uh you flexing on them, you know what I'm saying? You when you hitting your euro, you know what I'm talking about? You doing a yah yah on them and everything like that. Like I be trying to get folks to understand, like man, these women over here, like hoop hoop, like this is hoop hoop. They got the intensity, you know what I'm saying? It'd be a little jawing, going back and forth. Like you got all that in your game when you out there. Now you right here, you know what I'm saying? From from what I can tell and what the viewers can tell, you know what I'm saying? Talking about good young lady. Talking about praying, but out there on that court, you were straight up dog crump. Okay, <laughs> you a dog out there on that on that court. So where'd you get that intensity and that swagger in your game? Like, did you get that from your mom, pop, uncle, somebody? You know where that come from? Man, first of all, I'm from I'm from the hood, so we we can start okay. there. And I got eight brothers. Okay, I got eight brothers and nothing but but boy cousins. So me growing up. You know, just playing with them, playing with boys in the uh, boys in the uh, neighborhood. And I ain't have a basketball goal back then. We used to have to use a grocery basket, like mm -hmm. put it on the dumpster. So I used to hoop on grocery baskets. I'm talking about dunking everything. Hey, look at my finger; it's all messed up now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, like just go out there, just playing rough. No referees playing in the park and stuff like that. I kind of just developed, you know. That, that confidence in myself that I, I know I can play. Because you, you, if you can do this against boys and men, you can do this against women and girls, you know. And it, it really, my confidence really shot at AAU when I was in like seventh, eighth grade, because I was playing 17, 18 U. You know, mm -hmm. I wasn't playing at first, but when I did start playing, yeah. And I just, I just didn't look back. <laughs> just couldn't look back. Where, where you get that, uh, uh devotion to defense from like all of y'all that hit that flow and again that's what i've been trying to tell folk like all y'all that hit that flow we're gonna hold some defense some y'all better than others you know what i'm talking about but from reading up on you from your other stops as well it's like when coach reed brought you in uh in the write-up about you coming in she knew you were gonna play great defense you know what i'm talking about uh, mm -hmm. so so where you get that from to be devoted to that defensive end in addition to everything you can do offensively, you know what I'm talking about? Because like I said, you got the euro, you got the handle, you got the tray ball, you know what I'm talking about, but you also you trying to clamp some, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You you trying to clamp some yeah, down yeah. there. So, like, where that come from? I love defense, man. I ain't gonna lie. It, it didn't start that way, and I feel like every young athlete can relate to this. I used to hate playing defense. I was a straight offensive player in high school, but my senior year in high school, I ended up getting a new coach in high school. And uh -huh. he he humbled me, like really humbled me. He uh I got kicked out of the gym one time, almost got kicked out the team just because, you know, my work ethic. I'm I'm gonna be honest, my work ethic wasn't what it was that it is now, you mm -hmm. know. So and he kind of instilled that you're gonna play defense or you're not gonna play. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And it was the same thing when I went to Lamar. You know, she really instilled it. That's different in college, so I absolutely had to play defense. Right. Yeah, I just developed a certain love for it. Just being in sync with your team, it's just something that just I – don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's a it's a strong feeling that you have when all y'all in sync on defense, get a steal, get a turnover or something. That's momentum. Defense mm -hmm. changed momentums and stuff like that. That's real. That's real. So is that something – that y'all upperclassmen, y'all getting uh, those freshmen in with that, like y'all trying to put that in their mind as well. Yeah, we got some baby dogs on the team. Some okay. Baby dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they gonna love to hear you say that. They gonna love to hear you say that. Oh, um, I know this is a tough question. Okay, because I know you don't want to throw no shots at the fan base, anything like that. Okay, but I'd be remiss not to ask this. You know, to my because it's something I've been stressing and going to bat for and everything like that do you think that y'all got the recognition y'all deserve this year and if not 
what can we do as the fan base, the community, uh, to better support y'all? I want to say, first of all, shout out to the fans that did travel to the LSU game. It was way more fans than, you know, what we expected. But I don't really know what to say because at the end of the day, we're going to play regardless. Right. But we, it, it is very appreciative to see fans in the stands and stuff. You know, yeah. actually, you know, I, I, I honestly feel like we could do a better job at engaging more with our fans. So it's really, yeah, it's really not too much that the fans could do. You know, I know I'm gonna start next season, probably, you know, just after the games, go shake a couple people's hands, you know, and stuff like that. Just be more engaged and more friendly with our fans and stuff because they only know what they see, they don't really know us, they just know we can play basketball. So I feel like once we get an understanding between fan and player, then we'll, we'll I'll be all right. America, y'all see why this is my favorite player. <laughs> Do you see this? That is not the answer I was expecting. You know what I'm saying? No cap. That's self accountability. I was asking her what we ain't doing. She told me they ain't doing something. That's why this team is a dynasty. You know what I'm saying? That's why it, it, it's only up. When Coach Reed talking about we knocking on the wall, we about to break that thing. That thing finna come down. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? When we, when we got a real one like this, and we got other real ones on the team as well. You know what I'm saying? That's a real answer. That's a real answer. No cap. But I can't let you get out of here without hitting you with some of these quick hitters. These are fun. I love to do this with all of my guests. You understand? All yeah. right. So, since you are, you see what I got down there already. You are H Town legend. What, mm-hmm. And I mean that. What you did in that game, there was some little girl in H Town watching that game. And they mama, dad, is somebody that's pointing and said, that girl is from where we from. And you inspired her to go hoop. I don't know who it is, but they saw you. Hopefully, they real enough to reach out to you and, and let you know that. You know what I'm talking about? Before we get off here, I want you to make sure everybody know all your socials as well. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah. You inspired somebody. You know what I'm talking about? So you are already an H-Town legend. But I got to ask you about a couple of other H-Town legends. And le- and you tell me who's bigger. You understand? All right, man. Who are you? Now, I ain't got to be to the world. This is to you. Beyonce or Tina Tina Snow herself, Megan Thee Stag. That ain't even no real question. Beyonce. I mean... I grew up with both of them. Okay. Man, kind of came later on in my age. So, uh, but Beyonce, Beyonce, okay. I, Beyonce make a more variety of music. You know, oh, you know, y'all don't really listen to me like that. Now, I wanted to ask you, Tony Snow or Tina Snow, but I didn't know if your OGs, your old heads, had put you on no pimp seat like that for real, for real. I, I didn't know, huh? I know who Pimp C is. Oh, you know by Young Pimp. Yeah. Oh, UGK. That's my God, I told y'all, Young Pimp. I had a chance to open up for Young Pimp when he came to perform in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. That man crazy. That was dope, man. That man cussed out the sound guy. He was getting his sound wrong. That man cussed that man all the way out. I said, he is where everybody said, well, that was a real one, man. I miss that dude. All right. Got another one for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. I told the world about your versatility. You know what I'm talking about? And if, again, if y'all ain't see that this year, make sure y'all put your eyeballs on it. Go to the game. If y'all can't make it to the game, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all can get uh, the Jackson State Sports Network. Drop that $60. Mm-hmm. Be able to watch the girl. If it's a, a away game, especially in the swag, all the games were on the other team YouTube channel. So it ain't no use of you not being able to see the game. You feel me? So she is hella versatile. So I got to ask you about two other versatile players that's in the WNBA, okay? Who you got? Candace Parker or Diana Taurasi? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I do here. They're my, two of my favorite players, too. Right? Uh, uh-huh. Mm, you only get one, though. Y'all put it on something here. Can't take both. Man. I love Diana, but I gotta go with Candace. 
Okay, why so? Why so? Because I model my game. I model my game after both of them. But if you, if you, I like can see me, that too. Yeah, I can see that. If you think about it, I play more like Candice. And mm -hmm. yeah. Because Candace Candace play, play, play more defense. She yeah, more and defense. that like Diana more so. I look at Diana more like a guard. Even though mm -hmm. I'm, I could play, I could play everything too. But I'm gonna have to go with Candice. I see you as a big guard too. To be one hundred. No, I, I, I was, I was, I was guard throughout high school. It's just like uh, when I got to college, they started putting me more like three, four, sometimes a two, sometimes even a five. But yeah, I, you, you could just do so much. Yeah, but I yeah. played point guard in high school. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. All right. Another one then with two versatile guys. Uh, I think your defense is better than both of these gentlemen. I will say this. Okay. <laughs> but, but offensively, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, they, they're very versatile. They're big yeah. guards. You know what I'm talking about? So who you got? James Harden, H-Town legend. For many reasons, some off the court that we won't discuss. Yeah, uh, we ain't gonna get into that. <laughs> <laughs> James Harden or Luca? You know what I'm talking about? I know that's Dallas. You know what I'm talking about? But we we keep it in Texas. I'm gonna keep it a book. We say I'm gonna have to go with Luca, man. Ooh. You ain't expect me to say Luca, huh? No, because you from H Town, so I'm thinking you gonna go with 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 uh, James. I love James, but if we talking about basketball. I prefer to watch Luca over James because they're both skilled players, absolutely skilled. But it's like Luca's skill, if you really break it down, that man, that man's something else. Like he's slow and still getting past great defenders. Right. You know, he just his art when he just dribble the ball, like he he know how to attack angles and things like that. So I love watching Luca. See, James, I watch James more for you know, learning some new moves off the step back or something. I don't really too much watch James or his passing too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, right. I'm gonna go Luca, man. You right about that, Luca. Uh, I be trying to tell my brothers about Luca. We got into a big argument about Luca versus Steph last year. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and they, they just, they took me to task. I was trying to tell them that last year Luca had a better season, even yeah. though Steph led the league in scoring. I was like, y'all see what this dude doing? You know, but I can't cap. Part of the reason I like Luca is that now I'm I'm 37 years old now, and I ain't got I ain't got the jumping ability like I used to have. I ain't got the quickness like I used to have. So I'm yeah. big and just skilled now. I got to do everything off this now, and that's really mm -hmm. how Luca be hooping. You know what I'm talking about? So I ain't nothing wrong with that else. All right. Usually, right here, I ask everybody, Jordan or LeBron. Okay, that's what I use last. Like. Okay, but I told you my favorite player, and I don't want to mess anything up because I'm scared of what you might say to that question. Okay, I'm scared of that one. I'm scared of that one. I'm scared of that one. So, being that they list you at forward, being that you are somebody that can do a little bit of everything you can score the ball, you can rebound the ball, you can assist the ball, and you can play great defense, I'm gonna ask you about the two elite forwards of the past. Decade, decade and a half. Okay. Mm-hmm. KD or Brum or Brum Brum. LeBron. And she said that so quick. She did not hesitate. I love KD. KD. KD Cole, man. I just can't I can't let that that move go. Well, what to Golden State? Yeah, man. I just can't, even though like I'm older, so I understand it now. It, it really wasn't no bad move. It really wasn't. But at, but at the time, how you look at, at it? The time is, uh, you feel me? Like, <laughs> you chose the wrong time to do that, bro. That's how you going to all corn right now. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to all corn. Yeah, <laughs> 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 homie, there, but I ain't going to all corn. But yeah, right, right, right. LeBron, man, LeBron, one of the greatest players of all time. See, I ain't say he the greatest player, but one of the greatest players. Of all you didn't time. say. You did not say that. So, is there a chance that you think Mike, Mike Jordan, Jordan is the goat? Michael Jordan is the GOAT. That's the realest one. <laughs> That's the one. Mike the GOAT, man. No okay. I was scared to ask you that. No, no, uh, yo, yo, OGs must have showed you some 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 Jordan tape. Nah, I used to look at him myself. You be studying. You're a student of the game, Crump. Are you a student of the game as well? You telling me, are you trying to tell me 
that you got this sauce in your game. You're a student of the game. You're a prayerful person. You're a disciplined person. You play defense. You're telling me you got all this rolled up in one. Quit playing with me. Yeah, man. What's, crazy, what's even more crazy is I love watching basketball more than I like playing it. Nah, it just nah. give me give me most of the do. You know what I'm saying? Don't hear a lot of hoopers say that today, unfortunately. I see a lot of cats. I'd be like, yo, you watching the game? No, I don't watch the game. And yeah. that'd be in football yeah. too. Like some of my youngest, they'll be playing like quarterback. And I'd be like, y'all play it? Y'all, y'all watch that game tonight? Yeah, what you doing? You learn stuff from it, like the do's and don'ts. That's how my IQ got bigger at a young age. Right. Just watching basketball. That's it. And watching my film too. I used I learned how to break down my mm. own. How is that? How how is a film session for Maya Crump when you really being critical of your game? What you well, looking when it, for? When I'm by myself, I used to watch film when I was at U of H. I used to watch film with this friend of mine. His name Corn. So he he helped me learn how to break down film and you know what to look at and stuff. Because at first I just used to watch just to watch it, like oh they look good, oh you get what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, yeah, I actually yeah. learned how to break down stuff in detail. So me specifically. Uh, in the middle of the season, I had looked at the shots I was taking and why I wasn't, you know, getting as many shots up, not scoring the books that I usually score is because I wasn't getting to the spots that I usually get to. So, like, it would be something off the screen that I would watch, and I'd be like, I should have shot that. Or I should have did this. I should have did that. Or I keep rewinding something just to see, like, what I could have did better in that, in that predicament than I end up doing the next game, you know. Just little stuff like that. Has that helped your core vision? Because your core vision is stupid, too. It definitely has. It helped it a lot, especially in transition. Yeah, yeah. In transition, you like you be diamond folks up for real, for real. And then also in the half court set, you good at uh manipulating that help defender. You know what I'm talking about? Kobe, yeah. Kobe said some some so real one time. I tried to get my youngest to understand. Kobe said he was never worried about whoever was guarding him. Mm-hmm. He was trying to read the help defender, you know what I'm talking about? Because when you can read the help defender, it really come down to an A-B situation. If you step over, I'm a diamond. If they, you know, stick with their man, it's a bucket, you know what I'm talking about? But you got to be able to make that read that that cool. quick. Yeah. You know That's what I'm exactly saying? how I play. I don't be worried about who, who in front of me because – I know I could get around them. And that's not even on no cocky stuff. Like, no, when you just do, you, you know, I be, like you said, I'll be looking at the help defender. That's why I be having so many assists. Mm-hmm. Cause they be so worried about my scoring, but forgetting that I could do all this other stuff too. And yeah, that's why Coach Reed used to be on my neck about shooting. Cause I used to always try to pass the ball. That's dope. Yeah. Well, I'm sure those FGAs and those buckets going to go up next year. You know what I'm talking about? And yeah. so we need everybody to be in tune with you uh, to, to witness what you're going to be doing. You know what I'm talking about? I know you say you want to reach out to them more. So let everybody know or where they can uh, follow you at. And I'm going to uh, put it in the description as well for y'all. So y'all make sure y'all go follow. All right. My Instagram is easy rook, E-A-Z-Y-R-O-O-K. Twitter, the same thing, E A Z Y R O. Okay, those are pretty much the two only social medias I have. Yeah, brother, don't give your girl a follow, man. You a fan, reach out. I'll hit you back as soon as possible. Mostly, I mostly be on Instagram, but I'm about to get right back active on Twitter. I haven't been, I really haven't been on any social media, which I'll be honest because you know, the season just ended. Been locked in. Yeah, so I'll be, I'll be back active on both of those, though. Hey, real ones out there, for real, for real. If y'all, if y'all down with me, if y'all down with Jackson State, make sure y'all follow her. You understand? We y'all know we in this NIL environment now. You know what I'm saying? And one thing we can do as a people to help them out is help them get their followers up. You know what I'm saying? Because that yeah, looks good to these companies, you know what I'm saying? That that might be coming to them and presenting them with opportunities. You feel me? Uh uh, just by having a whole lot of fo- followers, they can become influencers. You understand? Uh, mm-hmm. These young men and women, they out there, they are walking businesses now. So uh, for real, for real, we want to help them uh, get this money. We want to help them get this money. You understand? They out there repping for these institutions that we're fans of. And so we need to help them 
in any way we can and this is a small way to do so so make sure y'all look down there in that description go ahead oh go on over there to twitter go on over there to instagram give her that follow you understand but i appreciate you coming on like i told you i want to reach out to your whole squad but i would be remiss if i ain't come for my favorite player off top you know what i'm saying with this so appreciate what you did this year proud of y'all for real for real you ain't gonna say it but i'll say it i told everybody y'all were the best team on campus i know what the football team is doing i'm proud of what the football team is doing don't get it twisted but they were absolutely dominant y'all were amazing this year you know what i'm talking about and y'all have some real ones behind you my wife is now a fan you know what i'm saying coming up she wouldn't fool with she wasn't like she ain't come up with a Jackson State. She ain't come up with a Jackson State background like I. My sister went there. My mama went there and everything. She ain't had that. One yeah. game of seeing y'all play. That girl, she gone crazy about y'all now. You know what I'm talking about? So that's love, man. That's love. For real, for real. So appreciate you. You know what I'm talking about? And uh, good luck. And and uh, make sure you continue. I well, I ain't no make sure. I know you're gonna be studying the game and working on your game this summer, and you're gonna come back doing numbers so appreciate you man i appreciate you for having me man no doubt this was dope i'll be uh, back on the show again just let me know hey y'all heard that america y'all <laughs> heard that you know what i'm talking about i might have to get her back once she do one of these trade ball uh, uh excuse me not trade ball one of these 30 balls i see a 30 ball coming this year <laughs> you understand i feel it you know what i'm saying but appreciate you for the show man my kids wanted me to tell y'all to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me across all social media platforms, like the videos, and share them. Did I forget anything? Enter on the post notifications. Y'all heard them. And also, visit StatementTeesLLC.com and shop with us. That's Statement Tees. Every t-shirt you wear makes a statement.